Thanks everybody for coming out. Uh, my name is Andrea Taeggi and uh, I've done a bit of work uh, on the uh, Telefunken RA742 during the past few days. And uh, uh, later we can do a bit more talking and if you have questions, please go ahead. I'm not a total expert about the uh, engineering and the electronics, but uh, uh, I, I can respond more to uh, musical mu music related questions uh, the basic idea is that uh, i patch the panel in a way that i have like four different resonators that in synthesizer language would be the equivalent of oscillators and so uh, the nice thing about this machine is that it makes fantastic sine waves that can be damped so the length of the wave becomes shorter and it sort of resembles uh, the natural decay of uh, acoustic percussion. So that's something that I always found fascinating about analog computers, uh, the percussive element, and uh, yeah. And yeah, so there's a nice buzz that the machine makes by itself, coming straight from the cabinet. Um, so I've made a little uh, piece, which is just uh, a game on rhythms. I have uh, three sequencers here that you can run a different uh, sequence length and you can make uh, interesting combinations uh, of rhythms with phasing effects and polyrhythms and so on. Um, later I can show you the elements individually if you like. Uh, for now I'll just play it, uh, which is mostly an improvisation really. and. Uh, Later on in the talk, I will also show some of my music that I have on record, which is also recorded on an analog computer at the Willem II Studios uh, in Holland, a different brand. Uh, so, there we go.
Thank you. Uh, uh, maybe you would like to hear the individual elements, just to hear how the sine waves uh, are controlled. And so this is one of the elements. It's a damped sine tone, and uh, there is control for that, so you can actually make it uh, longer. Now it's becoming longer. It's quite a beast. And yeah, the damping effect I find really beautiful. Like, it sounds a bit like if you have ever seen uh, experimental drummers play uh, a set. Sometimes they put like a tablecloth on the snare, they remove the snares, and it sounds like a muffled snare. So I always find it funny that like uh, a machine which is first and foremost not even meant for music can resemble, in a sense, like muffled acoustic percussion. Uh, two things that normally should not even belong to the same uh, category. And uh, then the patch is such uh, uh, that you can also change the frequency, so the pitch of each and every uh, oscillator. So the basic control is over uh, the damping factor, so shortening, lengthening the sine wave itself, and then um, yeah, frequency control. And this whole setup is repeated four times over the machine. And yeah. Yeah. Oops. I found astonishing was that uh, like a flute. How did you, how did you do this? Uh, ah, yes. But this is simply sending uh, the signal into a reverb. It's a spring reverb that I have here, this pedal. And then it amplifies also the, the noise. And oh, it's actually just picking up the noise of the instrument. The real sound of the instrument, because what I did before was to uh, sample the noise that, come, that comes out of the machine and then to filter it out. If I wouldn't have done that, that's what you would hear. Yeah. But yeah, it's uh, fascinating that these machines were not meant for music and that because they are uh, able to calculate uh, complex uh, mathematical equations, you can assign it uh, in a way that uh, it will produce a sine wave function. So, uh, but everything is CV, so the moment that you tune it in the audible range, then uh, you have uh, a sine wave to use for music. So I think it's fascinating that uh, something that was used even by the army and even by like civil engineers, people that had nothing to do with music, uh, can be used nowadays uh, as such. And, um, yeah, it's a fantastic way to repurpose the machine, I think. Are you using a digital interface to control the, the sequencing? Or was that all done manually or also by an analog controller? Well, uh, the sequences were controlled by uh, a sequencer that I have here that has a digital interface, but it's sending out CV. So it's basically just like gates coming out of three different sequencers. And uh, yeah, it's great that f finally nowadays they build these machines that can can send out CV, they can send out MIDI, and uh, so that you can hook them up also to machines from 50 years ago. And uh, it's remarkable to be able to do that because just like you can take out this panel and patch it offline when you are somewhere else and then bring it, uh, you can also just like program all the uh, patterns and everything into the sequencers somewhere else and then bring it to the to the machine and hook it up. And yeah. 
If you have more questions, you can go ahead. Otherwise, I can play some music I have on record. So the music I'm going to play now was recorded originally uh, in uh, uh, Den Bosch. It's a city in uh, Holland where uh, you can find the Willem Twee Studios, a uh, fantastic uh, analog uh, synthesis studio, uh, which has a whole room filled with test equipment and measuring equipment of this kind. And they also have a uh, analog computer uh, from Hitachi, it's a Hitachi 240, and then back in the day I managed to uh, took some recordings from it, and uh, eventually I also uh, sort of composed further. So what you can hear is basically the analog computer in the percussive elements and the bass, and then there's some other uh, steady state synthesizer that are coming from different devices, but the fundamental uh, sound element, like the, the carrying element, is still a uh, Hitachi uh, analog computer.
and so on. This was uh, recorded uh, with a different sequencer, which uh, is a not even a sequencer per se. I mean, it's a word generator. It's an old uh, uh, testing equipment, like still power plant sort of gear. So it was also interesting to have this uh, still 16-step uh, uh, sequencer from the past where you could still uh, have them run at different lengths. So yeah, always nice to make music in places which are not meant for, for uh, with instruments that were not meant for music in the first place, and then see what uh, you can do with that. Mm. If you have uh, more questions, I can answer, or I can play some other music that I brought. Yeah. But if you get into this uh, field, I mean, it's not uh, it's very unusual. Uh, yeah. Well, I was. Uh, the whole thing started because uh, I mean, I've always done music residencies, uh, if I could, in different places in Europe. You have uh, Ems in Stockholm, where I've been a few times. You used to have Stime in Amsterdam. And being uh, busy with electronic music, I went to these places a few times to do research and learn to use their instruments. And at some point, I got in touch with the people uh, of uh, Willem Twe. Uh, the, one of the studio technicians is uh, Hans Kölk, and is the guy who uh, basically set up an incredible uh, studio with these gears from the 60s. It fills the whole room. And then uh, uh, I was one of the first, probably the first, to apply for a residency, because at some point they gave this option. And uh, I used to play at the festival that they organize uh, in the same uh, venue. And so we already knew each other. And then uh, uh, Hans uh, Kulk uh, showed me this place, and I was like flabbergasted. And so slowly, uh, he kind of introduced me to this new machinery, and uh, which is extremely uh, rare, fascinating. Uh, it's all that kind of gear that would be thrown away by uh, sound institutes and research institutes in Holland. And what Hans did was driving his car and going to the basement of these places and bringing it back. And then uh, he's uh, uh, quite uh, handy with electronics, so he would fix them. And then slowly, over the course of 20 years or so, he then uh, realized that his old studio, which is now available for, uh, for research, for experimentation, for uh, yeah, courses. Um, so yeah, it's very, very special uh, corner uh, in this field. Yeah, but they are coming back. Um, yeah, so you spoke about uh, Bernd Ullmann, uh, who built his, uh, a, a huge analog computing machine for research purposes, for a cost of 10,000 euros, but also a small one called that for 390 euros, uh, which can be used as, uh, in the very same way as this telephone analog computer from the 60s. Exactly, you have Bert Ullmann's uh, um, that, and also the analog thing, I believe. Uh, yeah, that's fantastic to be able to use them. They're also affordable. So there is uh, some interest that's coming back from the real experts, like Bern Uldman. Uh, and so it's uh, uh, affordable and easy to get. But yeah, of course, there's not much information f uh, going around the world of analog computing, but probably slowly there's going to be more uh, of a buzz around it, also among the musicians, because I think that's also the sort of uh, market and group of people that it should uh, reach, among others, of course. Okay. As I read, uh, you did some music with fungi. Or with? Uh, you did some music with, with mushrooms, fungi, uh, mycelium. What kind of music is that? Ah, well, that's a project. Uh, well, I was fascinated by these new discoveries of mycelium, uh, that it runs below the forest soil. 
and recent discoveries, they found out that the mycelium below the, for the forest soil uh, makes the trees uh, talk to each other in a sense. Or uh, uh, basically the mycelium creates a sy symbiotic relationship to the tree roots. They exchange nutrients uh, with each other, so it's a proper symbiotic uh, relationship. But also they manage to inform uh, trees which belong to the same patch uh, of a possible virus, of a possible uh, parasite, uh, if, it's, if there's enough water or not. So mycelium has become basically uh, a new metaphor for the neural network, for the brain uh, synaptic uh, connection. So it's basically, technically, it's the biggest living organism on the planet. And it occupies all the forest soil, and only now we know about its ability to make uh, trees communicate and talk. And so, yeah. So, so, so you use it as a metaphor? Uh, yes, the me a metaphor for a human brain, for the uh, electricity connection. So uh, it was just like an inspiring thought that made me think of like the neural uh, brain complexity and also the complexity of a patch that you program on a synthesizer, which still runs via electricity, just like the, syn the synapses and, and uh, yeah, the word of uh, mycelium. And so yeah, just an inspiring thought. I can put some more music. Whoopsie. Okay. So this is also recordings uh, with an analog computer that came out on a. a for a different project.
Ja. Thank you so much uh, for coming out and uh, yeah, I would like to thank uh, Signa Labor and uh, Stefan Hultgen for wanting to host my presentation and also Bernd Uldman for the online help that he gave me a few days ago when I was like, oh my god, why it's not working? And also uh, Hans Kölk that despite being on holiday uh, managed to answer some of my questions about the setup. So. Thank you, everybody. And if you wish to buy some of my music, it's there on vinyl. Thank you again. <laughs>